Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rec Room Podcast. I believe this is episode five. I didn't check before we started. I probably should have done that. Great um, preparation. Thank you. I know this is very <laughs> this is very uh, well put together. Uh, as you can tell, I am joined by the lovely Sarah Rhino. Uh, is Sarah fine? Yeah. Excellent. In fact, that's preferred. <laughs> All right, you got it. Um, the creator of Delta Traveler, GG, under a lot of stuff, really, now that I think about your resume of sorts. Lots of Undertale. <laughs> Lots of Undertale, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kick off, I'm just gonna ask about that, that fan game, the Undertale Project. Oh, um... So obviously, for for those who don't know, Delta Traveler is, or well, I guess I'll let you explain it since it's your baby, your child. All right. Okay. So Delta Traveler is a uh, Undertale Deltarune fan game where Chris and Susie from Deltarune and also Noel uh, go to uh, different worlds um, with uh, kind of a focus on being in Undertale a little bit and Undertale AU's. Um, but most people only really care about the, uh, the other universes, like <laughs> Mario and, uh, Zelda. Um, yeah, it's based on the, uh, the Chris, where the hell are we meme? And, like, I started the project, like, very soon after that started kicking off, because I was like, oh, I could probably, like, make a game based off of this. Um, the intention was just to do Undertale and, uh, just the ruins, maybe. But uh, it kind of uh, ballooned, like, very big. Because I was going to say, was it just based off the meme, or did you... Was that, like, an inspiring factor? Um, it, it kind of was just based off the meme. <laughs> Dang, all right. Because it's, it's gotten very popular over the course of it... Um, having been released especially with chapter two which well, i've I also i've also gen i've also generally realized um i've kind of always had a fascination in like multiverse type stuff like combining different properties together like there are a, there are a few past projects where i i've done that exact same thing Ooh, would you care to divulge and tell us what those were about um so there was there was a project that i had uh called the otherworlder which was a uh an animation series where i animated um gameplay because i didn't know how to program stuff sure where there were like different weird changes and like weird like self-aware type stuff going on um the issue with that was that I was the main protagonist, and um, it was uh, before I started transitioning, which is... Oh, by the way, I'm a trans girl, by the way, yes. for those at home that don't know. Um, yeah, which, uh, which means those videos don't really age well. <laughs> That's fair. I can understand that. Um, and also trying to animate gameplay is fucking terrible and i don't know why i didn't just sit down and learn how to program the other one is a terrible rpg maker game called the completely broken rpg which kind of does what delta traveler does except with bad humor and dialogue <laughs> uh do you well, know what well, like five nights at fuckboys is I am very well aware of that's what that is. That's the first yes. part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, did you? What did you just like c copy paste it into that? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. That's so funny though. Just like it's an entirely different game for the first half, and then it just hard switches into something completely different. Yeah, that's really funny. Yeah, and fucking Freddy is like such a weird like contrast between everything going on what do you mean just the fact that freddy saying stupid shit when there's supposed to be like plot <laughs> going on and also there was a, and also there was a really bad romance plot in there and i hate it so much 
<laughs> it's like the equivalent of a Marvel character spitting out one liners every single five seconds. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Ugh, I better. Uh, you've got to look out for that one. It gets hit with a tank. Like. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, I'm your greatest fear. Um, actually, it's spiders. Um, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you, sh you have to do that in Delta Traveler now. There has to be a moment where Susie says he's right behind me, isn't he? Oh my god. Um, no, there is, there, there is that exact line for another character <laughs> in Section 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only the... F only the best predictions here on the Rec Room podcast. <laughs> we, I'm going to deconstruct what happens on a molecular level for the next, uh, what, five chapters? Uh, there are, there are, well, it's not chapters. They're shorter than chapters. Um, oh, okay. we, I just call them sections. There are eight. <laughs> oh, right. Um, so speaking of the different sections, how did you sort of, like, pick what, uh, not so much theme, but what game, basically, was going to happen? Were, were they just, like, personal preference? Yeah. Did you have, like... Pretty much. Oh, okay. Um, um... Oh, go on. I don't know what my idea of the order was. They kind of all just fit into place, to be honest. Because, like, I thought Earthbound would match because like you know undertale was inspired by earthbound uh and then i did my own uh gg underfell because uh i'm obviously familiar with it um a link to the past because i've done some kind some work on like a link to the past type stuff in unity before and also i just like the game uh ts underswap because that's like my favorite undertale fan game Hi guys! <laughs> Hi! Hi TS! Hi! <laughs> um, uh, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, because I also like that game, and also, game. um, there are no Mario and Luigi fan games out there at all. There yeah, I guess there aren't, huh? So I figured, you know, I should try to sort of, like, break the mold on that with a, a Deltarune fan game, obviously. <laughs> um, Fair. Toontown, because I like Toontown, and also I kind of want to, like, mitigate some of the problems I have with Toontown with Delta Traveler. Stuff like better animation and, like, better combat stuff. Make it not, like, combat based, based on, a like, RNG. I, I'm very unfamiliar with Toontown. I played a lot of Club Penguin, um, <laughs> so you'll have to fill me in about that. Okay, uh, maybe later. Uh, right. And then the last part, section eight, I kind of wanted to uh, have an original area based on like W. D. Gaster. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Uh, including a uh, dark world in there as well. So oh, I that'd think be that'll so be cool. neat. I, I think that it's very admirable to have, because um, that's that's a I would say that's a very ambitious sort of idea for a game to jump between different um not so much styles but different mechanics uh, between different sections and stuff because i assume for things like toontown and mario and luigi the game like the battle system is going to be changed as well yeah yeah it's going to be very different but i'm also going to try to implement like undertale isms into it it's like i'm sure everyone was hoping like Earthbound would be like you know like completely like Earthbound e, and completely like different, but it's like for one thing that'd be kind of boring to be honest. <laughs> um, second, it's also the section that Noel is introduced in, and I kind of want to you know have actual good game design. So also I d I just don't want whole areas to be like only that style i still want it to feel like undertale and deltarune that's fair i, I guess it would get kind of gimmicky after a while yeah and, um, consistency is very important when it comes to these kinds of things yeah and also my main thought is also like if you want to play earthbound 
go play Earthbound. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's yeah, the same quite... thing, like, why I'm not making the entirety of Undertale in this. It's like, if you want to go play Undertale, there it's, five, it's like $10 on Steam. Please, just yeah, go buy the game. Yeah, like Jesus, stop the stop the podcast. Do it. Do, do anything. Go play it. Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> play the game. Um, but yeah, that does make sense. I there is a lot of um, sort of development and design stuff you don't really realize about games until you're actively making one, um, because the best kinds of design quirks the player isn't going to notice if that makes sense and that is i think can be applied to all aspects of game design yeah because the idea for that is a i wanted to introduce light clear which uh turns uh the world into undertale delta rune um because you know consistency and b noel is there and i want to introduce her mechanics mm -hmm. so it would be kind of weird to have Earthbound gameplay with a new like character. Well, I think that the reason it works, like changing the battle system, works for um, stuff like Bowser's Inside Story and Toontown, is that their systems are very different compared to the similarities of Deltarune and Earthbound. Yeah. Well, yeah. Also, I don't really like Earthbound's battle system that much. <laughs> really? Fair enough. Uh, the interesting. only interesting part of it, in my opinion, is uh, the rolling uh, HP. The rest of it is just Ooh. normal, like, uh, RPG stuff, which I'm not really that big a fan of, TBH. Mm. That's fair. Because uh, I, I think that when it comes to RPGs, I think a lot of people, or at least from what I hear, they get stuck on, like, the grinding uh, factor of it um yeah it's it's very easy to get stuck in a loop of pressing buttons with no real strategy but when you have skill mechanics involved then it breaks it up a little bit yeah better. yeah which is why i love mario and luigi so much <laughs> yeah it's it's a great series would you say that bowser's inside story is the definitive experience for those games yes definitely it's very big um all of the uh, all of the uh, attacks and stuff are very fun to do. Um, the barrel attack is broken, you know, all that kind yes. of stuff. Very true, and it breaks up um, the the play styles as well because you go from like Bowser to Mario and Luigi in certain parts, and it keeps things feeling fresh. Yeah, and even it's like Bowser's idea. like it, like even in like Bowser's body, it's still a bit of a different experience because you go from like a uh, a top down view to a two D gameplay. Yes, it's very smart. It's a great game. Yeah. Uh, did you get the chance to play the remakes? The remake when it came out. Um, I've played a uh, Superstar Saga remake and a bit of uh, Bowser's Inside Story remake. Um. I thought the Super Star Saga remake was very good. Um, mm -hmm. It was. It runs at 60 FPS. There are, like, lots of details they got right. Um, as someone that uh, likes noticing all those small details. On the contrary, it's very evident that Bowser's Inside Story remake was rushed out the door. You think so? Yep. Um, like, there's some very, like, even, like, basic like animations they didn't even remake uh sp especially the uh the battle ending animations uh which are just ripped from dream team oh, Jesus, been a, even been a even in superstar saga remake they remade those I i'd have to go back and play it because i did not notice that at all also it, also it runs at 30 fps which is annoying does it <laughs> yes it does or at oh, least at, at least the overworld i don't remember if the battle runs at 30 fps or not wow Jeez, just goes to show how much i pick up on i was just like <laughs> i play video games i have no thoughts in my head <laughs> i i see i see big bowser and i'm just like yes punch i thought the yeah. visual i thought the visuals especially inside bowser were interesting but that's kind oh, of definitely. where my thoughts end 
it's, it's like you might if you're series. gonna play Bowser's Inside Story, you might as well play the original. I think they both have their strengths and weaknesses, but for the most part, I agree with that. Also, very funny that Bowser's Inside Story was uh, the top-selling uh, game in the series, and then the remake is the worst-selling Mario game. Period. <laughs> is it no the the least-selling one? I think so. At the very no least, the least way. selling of the Mario and Luigi games. That's so sad. I know. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of... To be fair, it was when the 3DS was it on its like way out. It came out in, like, 2018, so. 2019. Yeah. It's a shame that the 3DS died, because it was, it was such a good system. It died, but that didn't stop Nintendo from uh, patching out all the hacking methods, like, yeah. weeks ago. <laughs> Nintendo is so weird about that, and I've never known why. Their weird take on exclusivity of old content. It's not even, like, exclusivity, like, removing access. Yeah. Essentially. Scrubbing the archives of their past... Like, you're only allowed to remember the old games. You're not allowed (laughs) to play it. No, I, if they had, like, an actual brain-wiping tool, I guarantee you they'd be using it on people. Like Mr. Krabs when he uh, rewinds the TV from the dude's eyes in that one clip. Do you yeah. remember that episode? Yes. <laughs> like, just like, you're not allowed to remember it. It's so weird. It's such a weird stance on um, archival stuff. It's, it's not even a stance. It's like... Uh, What's the word I'm looking Antagonistic towards it. It's like, why would you want people to not have the whole library? I know, and it's kind of the crux on why I think um, Nintendo's not going to continue the Switch as a uh, platform. Because you know how uh, PS5 and like Xbox series um, continue the platform that uh, the PS4 and Xbox One started? What do you mean, continue the platform? Like, it's, all, it's completely, like like uh backwards compatible like oh, um it's, yeah, yeah, it uses yeah. the same store for it's pretty much just an upgraded um ps4 and xbox one essentially yeah i get what you mean i don't think nintendo's gonna do that i think they're going to their next console is going to be completely different it's not going to be a switch 2 probably i mean they already uh, the switch oled doesn't really count but it doesn't um, it's not <laughs> it's just like an they're... oled screen and yeah, a better true. stand I, I will say I did. I do have it, and I like it a lot, but it's impossible to sell them. Anyway, uh, no, I'd agree that it's not going to be a Switch 2, but I'd I'd be surprised if they even make a new console in the next three, four years. Because they're they're pretty Uh. comfortable with where they are. Oh, that would be a nightmare, because, like, you know, how their stance is on, like, like, one game every console. Yeah. With uh, Paper Mario and um, what's the other series that does it? Um, Mario Brothers is but just a lot of Mario titles. That Mario like that. Kart Eight is about to be ten years old. Is it really next year? Oh my god! Because it released in twenty fourteen. Right, it was on the Wii U first. Yep. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Jesus. And then the net play just keeps getting worse too. <laughs> and so do the stages, arguably. Yeah. I don't know. I mean I, they've been getting better over the course of the uh yeah. the the pass. I will say I really like the Yoshi's Island stage. I, I think that one is probably my favorite Mario Kart 8 track. It's a little jarring TBH, especially when you lose. Cause it's still because you know how uh, it's one of those stages that uh, changes the victory music? Uh, yes, it is. Um, it doesn't have a losing variant unlike other stages with that kind oh. of thing. So, <laughs> so, it, so like, in. you lose, and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You come in 12th place, just the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The fan, the triumphant fanfare plays, and your character is just sunk behind the wheel. It's like, oh no, I lost. That's so. That's really funny, actually. It is. 
uh, get uh, getting back to that 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 weird that weird Delta Traveler game uh, real quick. Mm-hmm. Ooh, dude, the weird <laughs> weird game. <laughs> um, was the process of making because I know that you had experience making games before this, but was going about actually creating it was that different than how you thought it was going to be, or you know, did it go like how you imagined? Um. Section 1 took two months to make. That's a lot shorter than I was expecting. <laughs> um, st- yeah, no, uh, all the Undertale stuff, um, is pretty much as I would expect it to, because I, so I've made a lot of Undertale fan games, um, so I basically used a lot of the work that I did on those, for Delta Traveler. So it's basically built off of those and then I added my own ideas to it or or my own ideas. The the things that I wanted to do with Delta Traveler into them. So that meant that I was easily able to get started on it cuz I already had a whole engine made. Um Oh really? Yeah. Um I think the only thing that was tough is uh, ex- is like explaining how things like work in universe, I guess, because this just this doesn't have really much to do with development, but like th- the world feel, because like you know how Undertale is like everything has is diegetic, essentially. Yeah. So you so you kind of have to like do th- like. Th- Okay, I, 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 I'm probably making, like, no sense here, but you know how, That's uh, fine. you know how, uh, in Section 2, uh, Paula is added to your party? Yes. Um, so she basically uses, uh, the same TP bar as everyone else. And, right. and in my mind, it's like, okay, she's using it because, you know, I don't want to make another, like, stat bar specifically for that. Right, right. So it's like, you know, Noelle and Susie use TP for their magic, so you might as well throw Paula's into it as well. And then you get questions that are like, why does she do that if, like, you know, she's doing, like, psychic? And it's and it's hard to just be like, well, because gameplay, because then people are going to think, like, oh, you're... you're not doing the story right or it's lazy or you're not explaining it well it's kind of why light clear exists because it's like you know like trying to like merge all these into like one uniform thing i guess yeah it's the question of uh like lore power like the lore for the character's abilities crossing in with actual Um, gameplay and stuff because if you had Paula actually having a separate health bar for like um, I forget what the term is Uh, PSI for PSI yeah and she and there were like healing items for PSI exclusively for Paula it would be very contradicting to the gameplay loop and really um, I think worse honestly and yeah. unfortunately, you just sort of have to make compromises with that kind of thing. There was, um, I was discussing this with a couple other people, but a similar problem is in the new Sonic Origins game that Sega released with uh, playable Amy and Sonic CD. I was watching a clip, and I believe she, like, she uses a hammer, right? And yeah. she has, I think, the equivalent of a drop-down dash or something. Um, and my question was, okay, why does she have like a Sonic esque attack if she needs the hammer anyway? And I was, and it's like that question of she needs the hammer to attack, but do you interrupt gameplay loop to compensate for that? And of course, there are, are ways to get around that, but um, it was. I just kind weird. of like how Amy was handled in Sonic Advance TBH. I've heard that it's uh, pretty good, and I. You know, I, it's I think it's that, like uh, it's like Sonic Adventure, Amy, but actually fast and fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. 
I don't know. It's it's an interesting. I think that problem is definitely an interesting one because it's something that needs to be done well, or you'll have a lot of people thrown off by it, even if they don't know why. Yeah. And so, uh, I, think, I, I think I think I handled it very well. I think her move set in Origins is also going to be used in Superstars. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, it looks like it, at least. Ugh. I don't know why they don't just, like, have her do uh, an unballed jump, and then you press A again in the air, and then she does, like, a spin dash with the hammer on her way down. I don't um, know. I, I don't think know that's like a pretty common. Is. I think that's a pretty common mechanic in other games. So. I don't know. I'm not a... I'm not a game developer. I'm pretty sure it was only in Sonic Adventure and Sonic Advance that she did that. Mm. And then after that, oh. they had her be in a ball or be in a ball with her hammer, etc. Huh, weird. Strange. I don't know. The, there's. I, I was a little afraid to bring this up because I know that Sonic discourse can be very, very easily activated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like what was it that just happened recently with the was it the game gear thing that where people were talking about how the audio sounded bad in their re-release of it i have not engaged with that i i haven't either but it's just it's stuff like that that there are just so many heated opinions about it and i don't think i've seen that level of you know, short fuseness in a fandom in any other like community on the internet. Um, or you could be me, and anytime you say something negative about Omori, you get a death threat. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I really really like Omori, but it's definitely not a perfect game. Well, I said I said I wouldn't include uh, Omori in uh, Delta Traveler, and someone sent me a uh, pixelated furry gore porn. What? Ooh. That's inc. I was not expecting that. Jesus Christ! Yeah, uh, that's the kind of the reason why my DMs are closed. Christ! Oh my God! That's incredibly uncool. And that that doesn't even justify it. Why? But it's it's like your project, and you've said before that you are doing sections based off games that you want to do, right? Yeah. I, I don't I don't know weird. why. <laughs> That's very weird. That uh, uh, jeez, wow. That, that I don't know if you can tell, but that really threw me off. Sorry. Yeah, I can tell. It throws everyone off when I when I mention it. Jesus. People are knuts. Also, That's... also unrelated, but back to uh, the question. Um, like Ness and Paula both use uh, like, well, mostly Paula uses uh, PSI moves that she doesn't know in Earthbound, and people get kind of annoyed by it. And it's like, well, why does she know it? And it's like because she does. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, uh, pretty much, uh, like, there, there are, uh, two moves that she has, uh, when she's in your party, uh, life up and shield. She doesn't have those in Earthbound. You know why she ha does have those? Because, A, she has, uh, kind of a similar one in, uh, Earthbound called PSI shield, which shields you from PSI attacks, but since mm. we mostly don't have those, since, uh, there aren't a ton of, uh, PSI attacks in, uh, in Delta Traveler, um, I just decided to just make it the light shield that Ness has. And Life Up, just, you know, have a general Balance. healing move. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all about game balance. Like, obviously, Noelle has one, but I think allowing Paula to have one as well, um, there isn't an interesting thing, especially for the final boss where a lot of team coordination is necessary. Yeah. There's that debate of, do I do it with Paula or do I do it with Noelle? And if people... Because it's like what you said before, Undertale is a very, very everything-is-diegetic game, and 
I would say it's natural for people to have that, oh, this wasn't, you know, how it was in the other game. But, you know, it's all just about game balance. If certain things need to be changed to let the game feel better to play, I think that's a necessary um, compromise. But I think one thing that isn't related to gameplay, but um, still pissed people off, was uh, in the Apollo fight. I gave her a PK Star Storm. Uh, I haven't uh, done. Oh shoot! I haven't done the No Mercy route for that yet, so I'm I'm very uh, unfamiliar with this. Well, yeah, there's there's a uh, unique fight in there, and. Uh, one of her moves is a PK Star Storm, and people are like, well, she doesn't have that in the game, and I'm over here like, I saw that uh, Ness, who doesn't have PK Star Storm in Smash Bros, has it in Smash Bros, so I'm like, well, why don't I do it here? And I guess the the explanation for that is she is so filled with grief and anger that she just realizes the power. It's not a good explanation, but it's kind of the only way we can do it without, like, not, I guess. <laughs> I mean, when it comes to Delta Traveler, I would say the... It, it's tricky because there's... I would say there's definitely a focus on quote-unquote universe rules and how they sort of interact with each other. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's it's not ev- everything's not going to be perfect with that, and some lines are a little, you know, are a little blurry, blurrier than others. If that analogy makes any sense at all, I don't know. I mean, I just didn't know that people were so. What's the word I'm looking for? Uptight about the rules about these kinds of things. That's kind of weird to me. Well, it's kind of the <laughs> that's kind of a consequence of being in the Undertale fandom. <laughs> Fair. Where even things like uh like the the rules between Undertale and Deltarune are fuzzy because monsters don't cast magic in the light world. They don't. Not in Deltarune, no. Well, but we haven't been in a fight in the light world yet, so we don't You're know right. for sure. You're right, and it's my pet theory that that uh, the light world functions identically like Undertale, but uh, monsters have forgotten how to do magic. Hmm. Because they because in a world where monsters and humans coexist, why would monsters need to keep casting magic if there's well, human like or like modern like technology? I think Undertale had like. There was some line of text that uh, said it's a form of expression, casting magic, um, because doesn't doesn't Noel also use like ice stuff in um, in Delta Traveler? Yeah, but there's like no explanation for why Susie and Noel can cast magic. I mean, they probably so. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I really hope. <laughs> Delta Rune Chapter 3, come out sooner! Come out sooner! <laughs> we need explanations, Toby Fox. Stop stop going on d- animated TV shows and d- make the game. Well, I mean, humans were said to cast magic. That's why the barrier exists. And True. they stopped, evidently, because Frisk doesn't know how to use magic. There's, like, no magic in the, in the uh, surface. Like, my idea for that is, like, well, monsters have been trapped underground. It's kind of all they had (laughs) for a while. And it kind of just became tradition to keep casting magic because of that. Yeah, that's a good point. Even when, when, like, human technology fell down in Waterfall. It's an interesting conversation, um... I wish it was a little bit more accessible, though, because because <laughs> I, 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 I guarantee that if we try to discuss this with literally anyone who isn't in the community, they'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? Are you talking why, about why does bro? the rules matter? 
And it's like you, you wouldn't get it. You're not you're not like uh, in Undertale brain rot. You wouldn't get it. You just don't get it. You just don't get it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I I have such a hard time. I don't know if you can relate to this, but I have such a hard time talking to people because it's like you want to talk about stuff that interests you, but all the stuff that interests you is so removed from normal conversation yeah. it's impossible to bring up. Yeah, it's like you, it's like you're, like, the consequence of being, like, such a nerd for this stuff is, like, you focus on all the little details and stuff, and it's, like, anyone else would be, like, why the fuck does that even matter? It's kind of why, it's kind of why a lot of Undertale fan games falter, in my opinion, because they focus on, like, you know, the love and violence, or, like, 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 there's just love in general. True. Because that's such a big can of worms that, like, I feel like focusing your game on that would probably, like, be very, especially, like, a Sans fights where it's, like, very apparent that that's the main focus. Oh, that is the quintessential Undertale fan game experience. Is you have it's it's a tricky thing to discuss because it is purposefully left. There's a dog in my room. Hi, doggy. Um, it is purposefully left vague in the game and is only ever explained by a singular character who is already misunderstood as it is. Yeah, um, and I think a large portion of the community knows what they like but they have no idea why they like it and so you get a lot of stuff and i'm not trying to bash on anything if people you know enjoy xyz uh more power to them but i i guess if if you want to make something good or take something from something else that you like you just you just have to understand it. You got to know why you like it, I guess. Right, and I think the kind of thing I think the reason why I like all these little details is that it connects stuff together, like themes and like even stuff like how like Delta Rune's Light World's menu is the same as Underworld's Light World menu. It's like there's like something there that kind that can say something about the rest of the game mm. and like how people are because even in snowgrave chris is love one th throughout the game and it's like it's clear that chris is not fucking evil like no definitely not it's like unless There's... you th unless you think that menu is like fake which yeah it in chapter two it's still the exact same fucking menu so like Chris is a very complicated character, and the reason I think a deconstruction of them is difficult is because we don't get a first-hand experience of who they are as a person. It's all second-hand through the lenses of other characters that talk to them and remark on things that they are doing. You yeah. never get an internal monologue from Chris. And I think, I, I just, they're so fascinating. And there really hasn't been, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of like, what other character in media has been written like that. And truthfully, I can't think of a single one. It's such an interesting way of writing and showing off a character. And I'm so interested to see where Toby takes them next. Yeah, and that's kind of another thing that Delta Traveler is focusing on, mostly in Section 3, or starting in Section 3, but um, there's some little hints here and there of that kind of, like, going in more in-depth with Chris. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, they're also, like, a very, like, it seems like they're, like, kind of a morally gray character. For and sure. I've noticed that people do not do well with morally gray characters. I mean, just look at, like, Kara or Asgore. Mmm, yeah. All the Especially Asgore hate. <laughs> there, 
Uh, I see a lot more Toriel hate, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Why? There is a, there is a, well, because... Because she's homophobic? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what? It's, sorry, my dog is on a boat. Dog! Stop it! Stupid dog! <laughs> I, I think, I see a lot of people talking about Toriel like, oh, she abandoned her duty, and, <laughs> um, and she... How could she hate Asgore when it's like, no, she has a lot of, I mean, that's fair. She did run from things and hide herself off um, for no real reason. But she, I don't, to say that she wasn't justified is completely misunderstanding the tragedy of the character. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you, you lose all of your children. Your husband is like waging war. That's a too, it's too much. <laughs> it's way too much. Like how like like even like even if like you know like it wasn't that how can you think rationally under those conditions? I don't know. I saw a post on Tumblr that de tried deconstructing Tutorials, um, thought process and motivation and it was something to the extent of she sees Asriel in every one of the humans that fall in the same way that Asgore sees Kara in every single one of them yeah. um, which is an interesting uh, observation because you know every time one falls and leaves and dies she's basically you know uh traumatizing herself over and over again and that's where you know the tragedy of the character exists you have to sort of think about things in that way or else you're going to miss the entire point of the story i think yeah lots of lots of interesting in-depth discussion <laughs> wait, wait, oh my god, it's in the lore, the characters, the story. I love Undertale. Undertalers, we, we are the Undertalers. <laughs> it's a good game. You should play it, $10. <laughs> you should play it, 10 It's gonna, oh my god, you know what? Something that terrifies me is that the game is gonna be 10 years old, two years from now. Yes, it is. That's, that's terrifying. I mean, it started development ten years ago. It's it's such an interesting game, and I think it really sort of made waves in the RPG space. Yeah, I I don't know if that's ignorant or not. <laughs> I could be completely wrong, but mm. I feel like it really did. Um, because it it was just so unique and so uh new and refreshing. Yeah. And then everyone had to spoil it with by by uh, ostracizing every let's player for killing. Oh my god! Yeah, that was a thing that happened. Because the whole because the game is is still designed in a way where it it does try to like get you to like you you know do pacifist. Yeah. Like Flowey is like don't don't next time you play uh don't kill. And also talk to fucking Papyrus and Undyne. Would you would you say that your emotions are an active gameplay mechanic? Uh. <laughs> I mean, maybe. It is interesting though how the game sort of punishes you for treating it like a traditional RPG. It's it's almost it's almost a it's post almost modern it, it, RPG if I may say so myself. It's almost Whoa. as if Toby Fox designed the monsters to be like real people. Yeah. <laughs> and how one small quite literally any decision course corrects um the entirety of the rest of the game. Yeah, it's a it's a game basically about like essentially playing god, I guess. Yeah, um, pretty much. Which is what Deltarune, for the most part, tries to avoid. Deltarune um, is more about... 
I guess I'd put it this way. If Undertale is about punishing you for treating it like an RPG, then Deltarune is almost punishing you for treating it like it's Undertale. D pretty much. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's how I'd put it. and Which is so... I've never seen a sequel do that. You know what I mean? That that kind of like Undertale Undertale does it focuses a lot on the endings while Deltarune focuses more on the in between. Yeah, that's a that's And that's and that's and that's, it, and that's especially emphasized in the FAQ specifically under the the thing that was like there's there's only one ending and like yeah, I forget what it, it was. I'm gonna check. It, it's like all the I I can definitely see um, a a game in Deltarune where you know you have choices in the middle that branch out, but then everything comes back for one conclusion. Yeah, because even in Snowgrave, it still ends with uh, Chris opening the dark fountain. Yeah, it it ends um. The endings are always the same, even if there are slight variations. Yeah. Which... Yeah, the question is, uh, then does that mean nothing I do matters? The answer is, there's something more important than reaching the end. Ooh, ominous. It literally is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! <laughs> How could we have not seen it this whole time? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit! It was under our noses this entire time. That would be such a great way to end the... What will probably be a decade-long uh, game is like... Or at least half a decade. is just like the, the... Everything fades to black and then there's just the text font that appears that says... The real treasure was the friends we made along the way. The, the real delta was the road we traveled along the way. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh man. Multiple I, people I, have wanted me to put that in and I'm like, no. <laughs> you have to. It's so funny. It's so funny. I, I love... I just... Oh god, the most I I'm gonna do. The most I'm going to do for that that kind of like cheesy bullshit is like Susie saying like I know where we are <laughs> <laughs> I I love I don't know if this is the right word but I love campy movies I watched um Batman Begins fairly recently the one with Val Kilmer and uh Jim Carrey have you seen it no I don't watch a lot of movies oh man it's it's just like pure it, 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 it's like super 90s everything is super overly dramatic Th there's a lot of like edgy punk rock kind of vibes coming from it it's just the best thing ever and it, it, it's just cheesy and corny and it's so good i i just love stuff like that because it's so funny <laughs> it's like the classic like love movie tropes like Oh, I, I love you. It's like, I, but well, we can't be together. No! And then it starts raining, and then and then the two protagonists, like, sad music plays while they look outside of windows. Just, like, stuff like that. It's so good. I mean, it oh, depends man. on, like, execution, TBH, because I don't really like, like, a lot of, like, corny, like, stuff. No, that's fair. I, I just like it because I think it's hilarious. I think if it's like like intentionally funny, then that works for me. Um, so you said you don't watch a lot of movies? Yeah, I don't watch a lot of movies. <laughs> Damn, sad. I love movies. I I just I love going to the theater and stuff. I guess Sorry. I'm just too much of a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it like that, <laughs> please, God. <laughs> Uh, I'm too much of a capital G gamer. <laughs> no, but oh god, horrifying. I wonder, do people, do people actually like call themselves gamers? I I feel like that's just a term coined by people that don't play video games. Maybe I don't I don't know I don't know. There's know some there's sure some pe though. there's some people that are like legitimately like <laughs> I'm a gamer. It's like, okay, oh. buddy. 
That is the only response anyone should ever have when someone says something like that. Look, I get it. You have, like, 30, like, Mario plushies or whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have, like, a, a bunch of, like, video game plushies around here. <laughs> yeah, you say, you say that being the one with the 30 Mario plushies. And, like, two game consoles on my desk. Um, let me look through my little notes here. I've got another couple of... I've got a Q&A for you still. Awesome. Uh, did you... Did you have a team for Delta Traveler originally, or did you nope. sort of recruit people as you went? Um, in March, I assem- In March of 2022, I assembled a team. Um, before then, um... Section one was mostly me. Um, I got writing help from Beethovenus, um, and there's a sprite that my brother made that I used, um, and I asked for help for uh, for music on Twitter, and that's kind of it. <laughs> huh. And, oh, the, and that kind of strategy kept going uh, sin, uh, in uh, Section 2, but in the middle of its development, I actually put together a team. And mm. it's been like that s- since... Well, actually, uh, I hired some programmers recently. Because I've been the only programmer, period. Really? Yeah. Has mostly been... mostly because uh, I think my code is kind of garbage, and I was like, I don't want anyone to see this. Right. Yeah, but then I was like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> Has it been easy, sort of, quote-unquote, leading a team, or have you, like, had experience with this in the past? Uh, this No, this is my first time. Um, I, I don't think I go about it the right way, though, because it, no. it, it mostly... Aside from music, which I just have, like, a list of, like, songs that need to be made, uh, what ends up happening with, uh, sprite work is, like, <laughs> uh, pinging the sprite artist's role and being like, hey, can I get a sprite for, or an animation for this? <laughs> so you just have, like, a server where you add everyone and be like, time to work! <laughs> you, like, blow the work whistle. I have a Delta Traveler, uh, development server that I made near the beginning of, uh, development. Mm, okay. Um. But I mean, it's. I don't force people to make stuff, obviously. Right. Because that's kind of garbage, and also this is a fan game, so it's not that. It's not that needed. Oh, sure. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I think work is important, regardless of if it's. Uh deemed if it is or not you know you should take pride in doing stuff well even if it isn't all that important i think well yeah you know I mean? but like i don't want to be like hey can you please get this done or you're fired yeah you don't want to you don't want to crack the whip too hard so yeah <laughs> get back to work delta traveler team <laughs> oh my god all the, uh, just everyone's like down on an assembly line, put, like pushing a single button <laughs> over and over. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> the Delta Traveler Factory. <laughs> uh, so it's really funny to. What if all games were just made in a big like smog, uh, uh, muck making factory, like a cartoon thing from the Lorax or something? I mean, it seems like a lot of AAA studios are like that. Yeah, that is true. That's a good point. <laughs> Oh, the AAA, like, actual game. Activision Blizzard. Is... Activision Blizzard being the worst <laughs> culprit, I would say. It's just, it's a mess. It's awful. Mm hmm. I, I can't believe. Like, every. I never hear a good story from sort of the AAA dev scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost as if it's capitalism. Yeah, well, that ties into a larger conversation. Like bad people social get, stuff. People don't really work to live, do they? No. 
It's kind of crazy. It's always like you, your soul belongs to us. Yeah. I I hope that if anyone out We're there all a family to... here. Oh, God, no, uh, no, no. God. <laughs> nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. <laughs> it's the worst. No, but I hope if anyone is in a situation where they're not too pleased with your job, I hope you get out of it, or I hope you love it. Arguably worse if it's a fan project. Oh, yeah, I <laughs> I don't want to... Toontown see. offline. Oh, is there is there a bit of a... Uh, is, is there a bit of negativity there? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know anything about that. So, uh, the beginning of, uh, the first time I actually did, like, game development work was, uh, in, like, 2017 when I first started, like, learning. Um, I got on this, uh, Toontown team of a, uh, of a Toontown fan project that I liked, uh, called Toontown Offline, uh, which is a, uh, offline version of, uh, Toontown, uh, with a bunch of, like, fun cheat commands. Okay. Um, there was, uh, there, there were a lot of issues, um, in that team, um, particularly with a, uh, a few individuals, uh, and it culminated in a lot of drama, and a lot of uh, bad shit happening twice. <laughs> well, you're being incredibly vague. Like, I'm, I was... am being incredibly vague. Cause I... Was it just like a lack of structure? Were people being mistreated? Like, uh, it, wasn't... it was basically treated as a friend group first and foremost. Oh. Yeah, um... I don't know how much I want to get into that right now, just because it's fine. Just because there's a lot of people that are like the project's still alive for some reason. It's under a different name now. Uh, Toontown Realms is what it's called now. Um, but yeah, no, the project is still alive. There are still people that like it, um, even though it's not what it used to be. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there are people that live in a house right now that I don't want them to be doxxed, so <laughs> I'm gonna oh, avoid right. I'm gonna avoid uh that I don't live there anymore, but I know there are other people that do, so I'd rather not talk about or go in depth with that right now. That's fine. Um but yeah, no, it it's just it's crazy to me how many like fan projects and this isn't even something about Undertale. This is just ties into a larger community thing. Um, it's crazy how many get started and then just have poor management or just sort of implode. I, I wonder why that happens. Like, why so many projects are just either planned poorly or managed poorly or just fizzle out. I mean, lack of experience, um, like uh, lack of motivation or will to keep going. Um bad decisions that lead to really bad decisions which uh lead to you getting called out and then you are pretty much shunned from the community so you end up canceling your game would you say that uh i don't know would you, would you say that fan games have to sort of have a lot better planning before going into them if you're going to work on a team i think you need to have a good idea of what you want to do and I don't know if you... Well, clearly you don't need experience, because, you know, fan games are made all the time. <laughs> True. Um, I think you need to understand... Uh, or understand what kind of, like, development you're getting into. And, you know, to not go, like, too big on... A project, so I feel like I feel like Delta Traveler might probably get canceled before it gets uh, before it gets finished. TBH just because oh. it's so big. Don't say that. Well, I I wouldn't be saying it if I uh, wasn't about to finish college and have to find a job soon. Oh, uh, fair. <laughs> yeah, I get that. 
And it's like, I don't know if I'll have time for it. If I do, then perfect. If not, then, like, or if, like, I lose interest because it takes, it, it's such a big project and it takes forever to make. Sometimes you just work on something for... And I think that this is this isn't really exclusive to a fan game, but it's kind of, of why, it's kind of why I hired uh, programmers because I don't know if I'm going to start getting burnt out on it completely or not. Mm. Like I said, and I and like of... and like I want to be able to reduce that as much as possible. Like I'm still going to be like even if I distance myself from it, I'm still going to be like the main director, main writer, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I do think you sort of have to, um, God, what was, what was I just about to say? I'm having trouble recalling. Um, this interview's all over the place. <laughs> this, it kind of is. I, uh, I'm just trying to think. You just, yeah, you gotta, um, with Burnout especially, this isn't really exclusive to fan games or game development in general, but I think people tend to start something and then it gets just more and more ambitious and then they grow out of it or they change as a person or they just get burnt out and then it just sort of falls apart. I think you just kind of have to set realistic expectations for yourself would be the message and takeaway from this podcast. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and with that, um, we are almost out of time. Uh, thank you thank you very much for coming on Sarah it's been thank a you for having me yeah and um, before we go I do want to ask if we went to Denny's what would you order uh, <laughs> not sure is, this is this is taken from that fucking Toby Fox interview yeah shamelessly not sure something with eggs and hash browns <laughs> plug your stuff uh, where can people find you you can find <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can... dies <laughs> you can i need to me... say where my socials are you can find me on youtube at a uh at rhino gg that's the channel name you can find me on tumblr rhino gg uh maybe on twitter if i'm still on there rhino gg um yeah Pretty much all my socials are Rhino GG, R Y N O G G. Excellent. Then, of course, those will be in the description. Uh, thank you very much again, and this has been the Rec Room Podcast. Subscribe! 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 <laughs>